of Fintech Live from Marco TV, featuring Kyle Spitzeri. Before we get started, just wanted to let everybody know we're running a special promotion today for Father's Day weekend. With uh, $99 orders, you'll get free shipping, 99 and above. So go ahead and take advantage of that. I will drop the link in the chat. And about now. There it goes. There you go. There's the link. <coughs> Yeah, and for uh, now I'll turn it over to Kyle to let us hear about what we'll be watching today. Yeah, we're going to do all sorts of exciting things with this uh, Data East Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We just got uh, the good word that we will be getting our brand new Stern Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles next week. Oh, I forgot to turn Xenon off. She's going to be screaming at us for a minute. Hey, Emoto. Hi, Moto. <laughs> sorry, you're not here. Yeah, sorry, you can't be here today. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to be getting our new Stern Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles next week. And we're going to be able to do uh, an unboxing. We're going to take it out of the box. I'm going to show some you know, good things to do when you're taking games out of boxes. Uh, I don't know if anyone's seen us take games out of boxes at pinball shows, but we've kind of got it down to a science. You know, when you're setting up like 30 games, uh, you know, got to do it pretty quick. But we'll take it out of the box, we'll go over it. Um, we're going to have some guests from Stern talking about it, the game with us a little bit. And um, then later that night, we will be playing the game. And you can watch all of us in our massive pinball skill level. Uh, no, yeah, we're all pretty average. But it'll be real fun. So come and join. Well, we'll have some cool stuff going on with that game. Um, and yeah, definitely, like Steve said, that uh, $99 shipping, a uh, free shipping offer for Father's Day, it's a good time to go stock up on your summer's projects. Anyways, um, we've had, uh, I've had some, a lot of requests for people talking about or wanting to learn more about um, opening up a new game, right? I just got a game, or I got a game that I don't know what its condition is. You know, what will I do first? What should I do first? Um, you know, and it varies depending on what, you know, what shape the game is, did the thing come out of a barn. Um, so we'll kind of go over some like basics there. This game works. It needs a lot of love, but we can go over some of the like real basic things I would want to check first before you would want to, you know, totally power it up and start flipping things. Um, and then we'll kind of go over the game and figure out, you know, other things that should be addressed before you start really putting it into your, like, constant play rotation, you know? MTM Studio said I'm Derek Small from Spinal Tap. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. The handlebar mustache really suits Steve well. <laughs> um, and what else? But yeah, you know, hopefully we will eventually be able to get like a good multi-part series instead of switching games all the time. Um, and we'll be able to take something from like, let's bolt the head on to, hey, we have a really cool game to play now. Uh, but for now, let's take a look at this. Turtles, it's very fitting we're using this game today. Um, Tell them why. Because new Turtles, it's coming. It looks really cool. Um, Stern has been doing a really good job with these art packages, like the whole package of these new games coming out are just incredible. Um, from artwork to sound to music to the animations, it's just like every game gets better and uh, they're all, I'm really excited to play it. But let's, uh, let's switch over to the, uh, this camera here. We'll get a little closer look of what we're working with right now. Okay, so. This game's set up, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's in pretty good shape, considering this game got played a lot when they were new. I've heard from like old school operators. They, uh, it was a good pa another good package from Data East. Um, kind of dark, sorry. It's in pretty good shape. Lovely game. But the third, first thing I would do with a game like this is like let's make sure the electronics are safe, right? So the first thing we'll do is jump in here find your head key, and hopefully it's hanging on the hook where it should be. We don't have to drill out locks or <laughs> take off any lock plates. So that's never fun. Um, let's get in there. I'm going to need two hands for this. How about you, uh, can you switch it to the uh, game camera? Hopefully that'll stay there. We'll get in close. 
Always put your back glass somewhere safe if you're going to be working in the head for a prolonged amount of time. I'm going to get this like way out of shot so we do not ruin this lovely mirrored back glass. Beautiful back glass. All right, the inside shot on the Data East system. Do we have enough light in here? Can we, we could, see? It could be a little bit brighter. Yeah, let's bring a light over and we'll get some better light. Eh, not ideal. I'll try not to get in the way. So what we've got in here are a mess of boards. Uh, this game, at first glance, we can see that the most common problem with these Data East games is generally with the power supply. This is an aftermarket replacement power supply. Uh, it is one we sell, a Gulf Pinball power supply. Um, second thing I notice right off the bat is we still have batteries on the board. These ones, I'm going to block the shot just a hey teeny Project bit. Hey, Project Pinball, good to see you again. These ones are crispy. These are bad. We want to get rid of these batteries. Um, and install a, uh, a non-volatile RAM, an NV RAM, in the, this slot here, uh, which we will do eventually. I'll show you guys how to do that. On these games, it's real easy because the RAM is socketed. We can take this chip out using a screwdriver and pop the new one in. Unlike uh, Williams games, where you do need to uh, unsolder the chip, but that's for a later episode. Other things you will be looking for on games like this is looking for burnt connectors. Um, on these Data East games, it's really common for the uh, AC in and the general illumination connectors to be burnt. This one definitely has the beginning stages of getting toasty. Um, we will want to replace this at some point. Uh, these IDC connectors are uh, bad. They are not good uh, for this sort of application. Plus, once these things have started to get worn, the pins will tarnish and uh, they will create more resistance, kind of creating a, a never-ending cycle of this thing getting hotter and hotter and hotter until it melts, and that's not good. Ugh, but I know for a fact they will work, and we will work with it for now. Let's see, what other things? I noticed that this power supply is missing a screw, and some of them are really loose. We're going to want to make sure we screw those back in. Uh, and get those things nice and secure. Uh, part of having these boards mounted is uh, part of their ground. Uh, we want to make sure that they're secure and grounded well. Um, other than that, I did mention the battery still being on the board, but it doesn't look like there's any corrosion, which is amazing. Uh, do we still have light when I move this close? Does anybody else think the audio is too low? Thanks, Matt, for letting us know. Way too low? Very low. Very low? Uh-oh. Let's bump that up. Bear with us. Sorry, we kind of just jumped right in before even doing audio checks. We're that, so ready. Is that any better? Yeah, better talking. Pinball. ROMs. The Processor. Neil W says, sounds OK here. Independent says, much better now, thanks. OK, Food cool. Bar says, sounds good to me. All right, hey, we did it. I think we're all right. All right, sorry, guys. Yeah, audio is like the constant bane of <laughs> setting this up. It's always nerve-wracking going live. Um, anywho, where was I at? Oh, we were looking for corrosion. I don't see any corrosion here under the battery holder, but I can see it inside. Uh, this is going to be ripped off the board. I'll show you. It's really fun to rip these off the board. Um, you don't need batteries on the board, uh, but it will not save your high scores or settings. Um, so if you do rip them off and you don't have an NVRAM to replace it with, you'll have to add credits or something every time you want to play the game. No big deal. Other than that, it looks pretty good. I'll back the camera off a little bit. We can lift the insert panel or this uh, light and speaker panel up. Can we see that in the shot? Kind of. Yes, it's, it's kind of dark though. Yeah, unfortunately I'm standing in front of the light. Let's see if I could get a little... <laughs> That might be better. All right. Can lift this sucker up. Everything looks OK. It is important to have these ground straps connected. These ground straps connect every grounded surface in the game. Um, so that is uh, imperative to make sure that they are connected when you uh, lift the head back up on a game. Um, it is stock, or factory, rather. 
one thing I've asked What do you, you think about lithium batteries? And uh, IndiePens would like you to say a little more about replacing a battery with something that will last longer. I honestly, with batteries and me, I want to remove batteries from pinball machines 100%. Just get rid of them because they cause more problems than not. It causes me more work when I need to go in there and <laughs> mess with batteries. In this application, like I said, this is the ideal game to put a NVRAM in. Uh, we sell them. You can get them for most games, most applications. I believe the NVRAM that we sell will work for almost every pinball game. 5101, 6264, mm -hmm. all RAMs you would need. Uh, part number 77 any pen? Is that like <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but, I mean, honestly, this is the most fun part, is ripping these off the board. Goodbye. We ah. don't want those. Get them away. <laughs> batteries are bad. You can remote the batteries. That oh, is a DJ, DJ just joined in, and he's got a tip for you, buddy. Give me a tip. Says the, uh, you're missing a tip 36C transistor on the PPB. There is one missing, but I don't know if that is totally stuffed on this game. Um, this is a very factory-looking missing uh, transistor. So I, don't uh, know, I, I trust TJ. Now, so I, I trust TJ, too. <laughs> I totally trust him because he is way infinitely smarter than I am. Hey, CNK, good to see you again. Thanks for hanging out. But other than that, this thing looks pretty clean and pretty operable. Oh, batteries, though. Um, remoting batteries is fine. Um, one thing you need to do if you were remoting batteries, like a best practice, is get them as far away from anything corrodible as possible. Like, mount them down here underneath the filter capacitor. Mount them to the bottom. Get them away from the computer. I see a lot of people mounting remote battery packs, like, up here or in these corners, and you'll run into the same problem. The batteries aren't on the computer anymore, but when they leak up here, they still do damage. Um, if you have the ability to, it's just best to remove the batteries. Get rid of them. You don't need them. Um, other than that, I think before we move on to the inside of the game, I will grab a screw and we will tighten this power supply down. Emoto, I think he just showed us how to get rid of batteries and just rip them off the board and throw them on the floor. Yep. <laughs> that is the funnest part with these Data East games is you can literally rip the batteries off the board and you will do no damage. Oh. I don't have a number eight screw sitting on my table for that. I could search for one, but instead of boring you guys by going through my parts box, we will uh, do that in post. <laughs> Anyways, everything Indy, up... Indie fans would like to know a little bit about NICADs and if they leak, and in other words, how, is it, how urgent is it that, he, that indie pens replace them? Here's the thing. Um, any battery can leak, right? But if you are cognizant of it, you shouldn't have problems. You know, the thing is, is you, know, you always have to remember, these are, these are commercial pieces of equipment that were not meant to go in a home. Right, so once they were sold from Bob's vending company and they went to the first owner, um, people didn't know they had batteries in them. And they sat there for decades with batteries. And that's why nowadays you see lots of games with corroded batteries on their computers. Um, as long as you're cognizant of it, you know, you don't have to worry so much. But I would recommend when it's time, always just get rid of them. Get rid of them. <laughs> My Twilight Zone still has batteries in it, but you know, one day, I will remote them and take them off the computer. Some games, um, you do run into problems where they have like a midnight feature. Uh, Twilight Zone will not keep time, and the clock won't work if you remove the batteries. FYI. You'll lose your midnight madness features on some of those games. So the head seems OK. That Let's, uh, has a really good tip, too. What's up? When working on a game from an unknown source, be sure to double check that all fuses aren't just good, but they have the correct value. Oh, absolutely. Another thing, I guess, here, let's go back to some other Data East things. Uh, this isn't pertinent on this actual game. Data East installed some really, really, really bad fuse clips on their power supplies. Um, let's get in there with a the hand cam. <laughs> this is annoying. Get this camera out of the way jump in with this guy and I will bring the light a lot closer since I'm not messing with tripods and we should be able to get a better image. Is it lit in there? On the Data East power supplies, um, any fuse clip on a Data East game is suspect. Um, I, I noticed that they're worse on the power supplies. That's in my experience. 
But what you do is you would remove whatever fuse is in there, and let's check. The board is printed 8 amps. This fuse is 8 amps. Wow, someone mm -hmm. can read. Okay, so when you have, if you get a new Data East game or any Data East game, get in here and pinch these fuse clips. Like, really pinch them hard. You know, give them, try to break them. Um, you will find more often than not that they will just snap without much effort. These always need to be replaced on old power supplies. Um, another very important place to check is on your flipper board, which is inside the cabinet. Uh, the PPB board also has fuse clips. Uh, take a look at all of them. They can cause intermittent gremlins and will cause you many headaches. Um, so it's best to address these things right off the bat. I will reinstall this fuse. And let's uh, jump inside the game. We can look at a few other things. We will make sure that it isn't a rat's nest of wiring and hacks before we try to power it on. Another thing I will show you all how to do uh, before you power on a game, it's always best to, especially if it's a game you've never powered on or it looks like it could be suspect, um, unplug the transistors. I'll show you, or the coils. I'll show you how to do that. Ooh. This thing it needs a good air compressor to the uh, glass channel. Ooh. It's got to get an air compressor in here. <laughs> All right. So now that we have this up, we can remove the balls. This game, ah, look at that. Let's get some light on that. I can see some damage already. This might not come in so well. Those screws through the shooter lane, those wow. aren't supposed to be there. That thing's pretty torn up. Uh, we'll see what's going on down there. The first couple Data East games had a, a with auto launch, had a interesting system that doesn't work too well and I'll kind of show you what's going on we'll see what that thing looks like remove the balls before lifting the play field up grab the play field by the apron and yank forward first thing I notice is this thing is really crunchy um, it should move smoother than that we can grease the rails, put a little bit of grease, and that will help things. This thing's pretty clean. I don't see a lot of hacks. The wiring harness is still like in its place, which is always a good sign instead of seeing things sagging. Got some goodies, got the original topper in there. Um, got a manual, you always want a manual. It's the greatest thing to have. And a, Terminator 2 hex post chart, or Terminator 3 hex post chart, that's handy. Um, <laughs> otherwise, that would, that would be useful for turtles as well, right? Because uh, those, those hex posts have the same part numbers as the do. Data East hex posts. You're very right. They absolutely do. <laughs> You've got your flipper board down here. Let's see if I can shine some light in that. This was one of the first games with uh, solid state flippers. Um, and again, these fuse clips can be suspect. In fact, since this is an original board, let's yank one out and see if we can break it. I need a tool to get those fuses out because I don't want to push on the transistors. You're going to pry a fuse out using a screwdriver. Use <laughs> caution. Be gentle. Do not screw up a trace. Do as I say, not as I do. And we've got these fuse clips. They still feel pretty springy. When they're fatigued, you can really tell, and they will give way immediately. It's, um, you know, if you were getting this game ready for route, or if you really wanted to 100% bulletproof it, you might as well just replace those fuse clips to begin with. But for now, we'll leave them. Let me plug this guy back in. So. I can kind of deem that this looks okay. Things aren't all over the place. It's not a mess. We don't have wires crossing. Ah, hey, look at that. That ain't right. One of my best tips, and I try to tell people all the time, is just always be wiggling, always be shaking things so you can find loose things. Um, that is like a number one killer 
of things in pinball. Hey, Mitchell. Mitchell has a question. Uh, Mitchell Reader. What's up? What is the purpose of the cylinder in the bottom of many BE games? Okay. I think from what I've heard, that cylinder is either like a subwoofer port sort of thing. Um, it helps with sound. But these, I think what it is is it's so you can't like nail that screen out and reach up in and steal cash. Hmm. So I think they so may a, have drilled it in there for better sound, but then use this kind of as a deterrent so you can't reach a skinny little hand up and start taking quarters. Um, I think. Someone correct <laughs> me on that if I'm wrong. I bet TJ <laughs> knows the answer. If anybody knows the correct answer, and if it's not that, let us know. Yeah, let me know. Other than that, you know, it, it looks pretty safe to turn on for now. The early Data East games with solid state flippers, uh, this was an era where they had no end of stroke switch. They had to go back and change this eventually because they real, uh, players would uh, report just bad flipper performance. Uh, the game couldn't tell what state the flipper was in. So if you had the flipper fully energized and a ball came and hit it and pushed it down because it's using its 9 volt hold voltage to keep it up, uh, the flipper would never re-energize and reset. So only a few games came without end of stroke switches. Um, the more you know. This is the goofy um, auto launch setup. What Data East did was they ran, let's see if I can get it from the other side. It's, it's lit would like you to, to get a closer look at the, uh, the spring, I guess the compression spring over the plunger which plunger on the flipper mech I guess that's what you were just looking at sure yeah I can do that this um, you can see this armature here <laughs> I can see that it's not square um, that's not good first off you could see how little area there is for a contact with the uh, ball if that thing's not square it's gonna hit pretty weak uh, but you can see that there's a hole here and the plunger for the actual plunge would go through there and then this thing would try to smack the ball up um, when I look from this side, you can see where those screws are attached. Um, it's all bad. Yeah, that's, that's awful. There's a lot of wood filler. That's, that's not good. <laughs> so this one will be a bit of a... We'll have to do some uh, arts and crafts to get this thing uh, auto-plunging better. Indy Independence wants to know where the girl is. Emoto? <laughs> yeah, where's the girl? Where's the girl? Emoto, where are you? <laughs> Emoto had some things to take care of and couldn't make it to our live stream today, and we miss her very much, but she will be back next week. Next week. You won't have to look at this ugly mug anymore. Ugly? <laughs> what do you mean? I think I just hit record on the camera. Oops. Okay. Anyways, yeah, let's, um, let's do this. Let's power the game up. Oh, sorry. We wanted to look at the compression spring. I yeah. actually have one here. So he pointed it out because that's what, that the, that's a, what the problem was on his hook. Okay. So he said that, that spring had broken. Yep, that's very common. Um, that's why most flipper mechs went away from uh, what is called a compression spring, and they went to an expansion spring. These things can break and cause the plungers to hold up. Uh, what you have here is a, you've got four cleats on this coil retaining bracket, and this spring is supposed to sit right inside those cleats and keep it centered. This one does not want to do that. Um, I believe you can use the Williams spring in place of the Data East spring, but I do know the Data East spring, or the proper Data East spring, is a little bit heavier gauge spring for what it's worth. It doesn't matter too much, I couldn't tell you, but you know, the part's available, you might as well use it. Another thing, if your game is super original and it's unlikely to have them, uh, the links on the original Data East flipper plungers were kind of shaped like a figure eight. And I brought one so you could see what they look like. These things are pretty weak. Uh, you can see just uh, they have a you know much skinnier portion here in the center compared to a updated or um, I guess you could call it a Williams style link. These things will snap. Um, you usually would want to change them out. Um, if you were to change them out, you could always just replace uh, the plunger and link, which is a possibility with the, you know, unscrew this thing, get the collar out. I'll do it. I'll show you all. Um, 
but you know, one thing I've always thought of is these things are four or five bucks. I think this thing is twelve dollars for the entire assembly. It's going to take you three or four or five minutes to get these things separated. It's, sometimes it's worth your money just to buy the total piece instead of sitting here and trying to unscrew things. Um, but I'll go through that. We can take a look at that later. Anywho, um, I think it's safe to turn this thing on. It's really awesome when Data East games still have their play field stays. <laughs> These things are always ripped off. I know that we have those reproduced, right? Yes. Yeah, yep. You, you can buy those new if your Data East game is missing its uh, stay. Um, yeah. Some things we'll be doing, it looks like, is we can figure out why this coil is super loosey-goosey. I always like to uh, lube these uh, ball serve armatures. Um, the out hole kicker armature can use some grease, usually. They're kind of... Gunky. Uh, yeah. Jay Lee Bolton has a name for our new show. What is it? Steve and Kyle in the Afternoon? What do you think? Ooh. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's got a nice ring to it. Another thing we'll do is definitely make sure we grease um, these playfield slide rails. It's, uh, it's not pleasing to lift this playfield up. Let's put it that way. OK. Let's get this playfield down on its stays real quick. Ugh. That's too much yeah, that effort. Is crunchy, huh? It's crunchy. Thankfully, I have some grease with me. When I grease things on pinball games, I really like this is what I use is some CV joint grease. Less is always more when it comes to this kind of stuff. You do not want to slop and gunk it on, and it goes a long way. I think I've had this tube for like four years. <laughs> I think I've only gone through two of these in the time I've been working on pinball. I, m I miss TJ. It says, but if the playfield stays are missing, they've usually been ripped from the playfield, leaving yep. destruction behind. Much destruction. <laughs> it is. It is. You you lose points if you uh, make it worse when you try to make it better. But I would recommend uh, seeing if you could fill that. Um, don't necessarily use a larger screw just because you can. You know, see how you can make it nice before you start crunching things back in. So. Before we turn the game on, let us, um, you know, we've already gone through here, made sure things seem and deem safe. Sometimes I like to press on some of these chips and you can get some crunch out. Um, we should remove the ugh, solenoid drives. Just in case, if there's anything wrong with the game and something's locked on because you have a bad transistor or something like that, um, you don't have to worry about it blowing out, right? So we've unplugged those. Let's go back over, not knock over the light, and uh, turn the game on. Uh, Chris Hyde loves your uh, Morton Salt tattoo, man. <laughs> hey, thanks. I'm actually wearing the matching shirt. Jawbreaker. It's my favorite <laughs> man. We've got life. We've got a uh, pin score dot matrix in here. The uh, what was the first game to use a dot matrix was Checkpoint. Checkpoint, yep. And Data East used a teeny leeny little DMD, I think for only like four games. The Checkpoint, Turtles, Star Trek. Batman Forever? In Bat. No, one of the Batman. Was it Forever? I can't remember. I don't remember. So many Tim Batman. Burton Batman. So many Batman. So yeah. it wasn't Forever. It was, the, yeah, it was just the Batman. Yeah, Batman. 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 Yeah. yeah. So it, it's real common. It's hard to find this glass. So this pin score is a invaluable thing. Uh, when we sell them, if you bought one on our website, we do include the display ROM too, so it's basically a plug and play thing. It's pretty awesome. But anyways, yep, yeah, nope, it's, it's living. So we've got lights, we've got a dot matrix, um, the sound worked, the computer interrupted the sound when it started saying turtles. Um, so, you know, logic wise, oh, it TJ seems pretty said good. We forgot hook. So. Oh, hook. Yeah. Hey, thanks yeah. TJ. Thanks TJ. Man, you need to be here every time. <laughs> Let's turn this thing off and let's plug the solenoids in and let's see if we have any sort of lock-on problems. If we had a shorted transistor, a coil would be stuck on. You can hear it. If you turn a game on and you hear a coil immediately go bang before you have anything else going on, you have a shorted transistor. Turn the game off immediately to save the coil. 
go. Let's close this thing back up. This is a two-handed job. Oh, nice. I think it's time to shut Xenon off. Moto's just shaking her head like, I can't believe <laughs> right? you left background noise on. All right, let's oh. power this thing on and see if we get any thunks. Hey, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. Okay, that's cool. That means a lot less work for us. Um, looking over the game, we could see that it's in pretty good tick. Someone has done some you know, decent cosmetic care for the game. Um, we're missing a lot of foam on the back of these targets, um, all of them. Got some GI switched to LEDs, but yeah, we Moto do. Says she likes the xenon sound. Oh, okay. Well, xenon can stay then. We have some. Uh, we do have a lot of GI out, uh, so we should. We will want to check that out. Um, the bottom strand of GI is on, but we're missing another couple strands. Uh, you might hear that term to check your strands of GI. You'll notice, let's lift the play field up. GIs run on, uh, they're AC circuits. So you've got a, a feed and a return. And we can see here that the lower bit of the play field was working. And we can see, you know, here's some GI, right? We've got the pop bumper lights. So let's see here. You know, they're daisy chained together. You've got a staple wire, a wire jumping from socket to socket. <laughs> MDM Studio says, Get a colonoscopy to check your GI. Is it well, gas your gastrointestinal? I guess I'm this not, needs general illumination, MGM Studios. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for keeping me in check, MGM Studios. GI, general oh. illumination. Now, I don't like acronyms. When people give me pinball acronyms, it, it takes me longer to figure out what you're trying to talk about than if you just type the word out. But I'm using acronyms. I feel bad. General illumination. General illumination are lights that are on, uh, not controlled, which I would call these a feature lamp. Some people call them a controlled lamp. The computer tells these to go. The GI is just on. This is GI. They always are on. Anyways, we have these jumper wires. We can follow this back and find that we've got yellow and white yellow. That's one strand of GI. Generally, games will have three, four strands of GI, and they'll be sectioned off. So we can notice we've got the yellow and white here. We've got the yellow and white here. Let's go down to some that aren't working. Ah, we've got white, purple, and purple. It looks like the white, purple, and purple is still here on the bottom left side, or the upper left side, depending on how you orientate it. And it's same here. So it looks like the play field has two strands of GI purple and white purple on this half, and yellow and white yellow on the lower half towards the flippers. So we've got a strand that's not working. Um, we should go up in the head and find that. It looks like the two strands that are in the uh, actual insert, this being the insert, the white panel, where all of the feature lamps are mounted to. Um, what are other terms people use for insert? Um, tub? I've heard tub. <laughs> Yeah, I've um, heard tub. Well, tub would be for like a, a WPC like a more like a WPC 95 game. game. Yeah, yeah. This but would insert, be insert panel is typically what you what yeah. you hear. Yeah. Insert panel or uh, display panel. Um, that's what that is referred to as most of the time. Other than that, you know, looks pretty okay. Um, I do want to figure what this is. These are sorts of things you want to fix before you play the game. At this point, you might be like really, you know itching to be like, oh, it's time to play, I want to flip, I want to flip. But these are the sort of things that under constant action can shear screws, wear things out. Um, let's look, take a look into that. We come from the bottom, I'm going to guess. Ah, yes. We have a very clearly missing screw here. Tracy from BNC Austin says, hey, Kyle. Oh, hey, what's up, Tracy? I'm sad that we won't be able to hang out at uh, Houston this year. Next year, what a fun show, Houston. It's, it's great. It will be again. It will be. It'll be fun to see Keith and all of the awesome people in Texas. So yeah, um, let's look at some of the mechs under here too. And if you have a newer game, uh, if you're familiar with like newer Stern games, some of this stuff's pretty interesting. The slingshot brackets are very similar looking to what Stern's using nowadays. Um, Data East 
you know, is Stern. Gary Stern owned Data East, um, and he, they never shut it down through two different name changes from Data East to Sega to Stern Pinball. Um, so a lot of these things are the same. I believe even these upkicker brackets were still used up until the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. um, what other mechanisms do we have in here? This game's fun because it does have the uh, the sewer and then the upkicker there. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, you see how slow that wow. moves? Wow. That could use some cleaning and some oiling. That's bad. Jeez. Let's see what we can do. There aren't many things you want to oil on a pinball game. This is going to be fun to do one-handed. But sometimes a little lubrication can really go a long way. I like this. It's called a, spa um, a zoom spout oiler. It's got this internal... Um, are you sure that's not for a colonoscopy? <laughs> no more colonoscopy <laughs> jokes. <laughs> jokes. <laughs> zoom spout oiler. It really lets you control and use just a teeny bit of oil to get things lubricated. I can see the pivot points, and here you can insert this oiler and squeeze a teeny bit of oil. Less is always more in these sorts of situations. We're just trying to cut 30 years, 31 years worth of gunk. Put a little bit of oil on those pivots. Now I can safely reach in here and hit the plunger and, ah, it's getting better. You have to work it in a little bit. But other than that, you really only want to oil pivot points like this. That's uh, you, you do not want to lubricate anything else on pinball machines. That one's actually a little sticky. If you add oil and it does not make it better, do not keep adding oil. Take the assembly apart and clean it, and then oil it. Pro tip. TJ says, tri -flow is also great. WD-40 turns into a gummy mess after yes. a while, so don't use WD-40. Yes, please do not. Let's set the camera down. Let's look at some other stuff on top real quick. Um, I want to, while I have the camera down, sorry. I think we're just missing a screw and it is loose. Um, I'm going to reach in here and grab a tool and see if I can tighten this thing down really quick. I do not want to break the game uh, and I do want to fire it up and see what kind of shape it's in before we try to figure out what we're going to do next. It does tighten down. So it looks like uh, one screw came out and then we lost the other one due to vibration. Um, and hey, look at that. You never know what you're going to find in your bottom of your pinball cave. I found the screw. Yeah, screw. <laughs> so sorry y'all are looking at the back of my head, but let me get in there. But I just, I cannot stress enough how important it is to wiggle. Ah, okay, here's the problem. Netreamer wants to know where the cap is to your bottle of oil. I have not lost it, Netreamer. You, you got to put it on there when it's not in use, buddy. Right there. <laughs> You're very right. <laughs> I'm teaching worst practices now. It looks like what we have here is a stripped out hole. Um, either that or this screw is not the right length. Being able to... Um, Identify screws is really important. It's not something you need to like, like memorize right off the bat, but being able to tell what type of screw might live somewhere, what size a screw is, to be able to reorder them. I think we sell a hardware gauge. We do. Um, yeah, that, that is a useful thing. Mm -hmm. Very useful thing to have so you can learn how and where things go. Another best practice is to turn the game off when you're reaching around so you don't zap yourself. So I will follow my own advice and do that. This screw is not long enough. It looks like we're going to need a half inch screw. So you don't think that was the screw that was missing from that position? Though? No. Sometimes you get lucky. I mean, let's look at the bottom of this game because this is not a well cared for or, you know, shopped out game. Let's see if I can bend a light in here. There is a lot of dirt and grossness. There's parts. There are broken things. But a lot of times if you do have something missing hardware wise, it can be at the bottom of the game. It never hurts to look. Um, you always find treasures in the back of games. In fact, there is a leaf in the back of this game. How did that get in there? Who knows? Let's see. What is that? Is that a token? TJ says to never add screws to a pinball machine without first looking in the bottom of the game for them, especially true of wood screws. 
Absolutely. And that reamer says, no, no, I was trying to point out that the bottle design comes with a tip holder on the bottle cap. Ah. How about that, buddy? You don't even need that thing. You just, yeah. Oh, perfect. There you go. All right, all right. <laughs> Thanks for the tip, Matt Ray. I like that tip. Learned I always thought that that was a uh, like a, a flow valve or something to let air come in, but I guess <laughs> it kind of doesn't make sense. Either way, it doesn't look like I have any screws back here. Um, we will need to find the correct screw for that. Thankfully, I have a massive box of screws. I am going to go grab it now, and let's see if we can fix that before uh, we try to hit the ball around and see where we're going. Sorry, I'm going off camera for a second. And uh, Fedge W. Kinar says, Play pinball, dudes! Play pinball, dudes! Cowabunga! <laughs> Bodacious! <laughs> this game says all sorts of great stuff on it, too. Oh. You've got turtle power, cowabunga, uh, and that's it, actually. So, Bodacious is on the plate here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there are baby turtles. Emoto was very happy to learn that there are baby turtles in this game. Um, here is my unorganized massive box of hardware. Every single pinball person needs one of these. Um, <laughs> let's see. Let's dump it out and see what we can find. This is my box of threaded hardware. I have a box for sheet metal stuff also. But I know that that screw was a number six screw, and it needs to be longer. <laughs> what are you laughing at? It just says we should use the, uh, the turtle's topper for Kings of Steel. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Who said personally. that? Uh, Fedge W. Kanar. I think that person is deserves a medal. That's I agree. a great idea. Yeah, that's brilliant. Here's a number six screw. Here's a number eight screw. Um, this might not come through on camera too well, but you can kind of see that the screw on the bottom is a lot thicker than this one up top. So that's how I know that this one might be the best choice. This is what's called a uh, SEMS head screw. I believe, a captive, right? Captive washer. It's got a captive lock washer. washer. Yep. Uh, these are very, very, very common on pinball games. Um, most coin operated things. Um, other things I like to save, I mean, these Allen cap head screws for coil stops. Um, these, uh, again, another captive lock nut. Uh, Keps. Keps a nut. Keps nut. Um, the other important thing to keep a lot of are. Um, elastic lock nuts, mm -hmm. the ones with the little nylon bits inside, those are real common pieces of hardware you will need when you're going in to uh, fix these games that are missing all sorts of stuff. T-nuts are another thing that are really handy. I'm excited to try and show how easy it is to install one of these things and to not be afraid. <laughs> uh, these things are handy. What this is, they've got these cleats. They, uh, they, they spike into the bottom of the playfield, and that allows you to thread a screw, not that screw, wait, that's not a number eight either, there we go, an, a screw through the bottom of the playfield. So these will be used to hold studs a lot of times, a lot of your playfield uh, posts. Um, it's much stronger than a wood screw, um, and it's a little bit cleaner than just putting a really long screw and a nut on the bottom. Anyways, hardware 101 is a very important thing to undertake when you're trying to figure out how what you need to fix these games. Not taught at many local colleges. I do think that that um, turtle's topper will go on Kings of Steel. So you're going to show us how to install that Tina, but how do you remove the old one, which is stripped out? Um, well, a lot of times it's not stripped out. A lot of times, can you see that pop bumper bracket at all? Barely. I was thinking, it's like, could I get the camera in here instead of just watching my back? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's better. You can kind of see something. Yeah. Let's see if we can get this thing in here. T-nuts don't generally, oh, don't do that either. Dropping screws is not the uh, proper form. And thanks MGM Studio for reminding us that Marco does have all the number five screws in stock. Yeah, number five. Uh, screws you'll need depend on the manufacturer and the era of game, but uh, number two screws are generally used on switches, uh, micro switches mostly. Number six and number eight screws are used everywhere. Um, number six, I get this number. Um, the smaller the number, the skinnier the screw. Um, let's do a little hardware 101 for just a second here. 
while we, before we get to turn this great game on. Again, kind of the opposite of the way wire gauge works, right? It's yeah, right it's American <laughs> standard <laughs> systems are not intuitive. You might hear something like a, I need an 832 screw. An 8 means that it is a number 8, which is the thickness. I don't know what it actually means. It's, it's all kind of <laughs> arbitrary. <laughs> arbitrary. Like, yeah. And then the 32, the number after that, means 32 threads per inch. A lot of standard machine screws are 32 thread per inch. Um, some larger screws, um, let me see if I can find one. Here we go. This is either a number 10 or a quarter inch, but this looks like it's a 24 thread per inch screw. So generally the screws you're going to want to stock are, you know, 632s, 832s, get some matching nuts and washers, and build up your hardware section. If you're ever ordering parts and you want something just to fill out your order, it's never a bad idea just to grab handfuls of screws. You and can we never have, have too many. Marco, we sell a, a really good fastener kit. Great. Which comes with everything you just described and more. That's a great base to start your hardware collection. Um, like I said, this, this box of hardware, this lives in my service parts box, the thing I carry with me on service calls, and it's always good to be able to have a spread <laughs> of hardware. Anywho, we have this thing tightened up. No more bouncing coils. Beautiful. Yeah, I think it's uh, time to start a game on this thing. I'm going to turn the volume down. I'm hoping left is down. <laughs> you never know how they're wired. This is the factory piece of fish paper that would, um, these would have been adhesive and this would attach to cover the high voltage on this flipper board. These are generally missing. So uh, if you ever do see one of those in your game, it is a cool thing to have and try to mount back again. Oh, let's say, uh, I'm going to grease those playfield slides while we have them out as well, or while it's up. So sorry. Camera's going to go back down for just a second. Oh, okay. Since I do not have a paper, oh, I do. I have a whole roll of paper towels. That is a lot of number five screws, Amoto. That uh, free shipping for over over ninety nine dollars for Father's Day. Yeah, and imagine how many number five screws you could get for ninety nine dollars. Yeah, buy a hundred dollars worth of hardware. That's a lifetime and supply. Thank you so much, Mitchell, for posting that link to the fastener kit. All right, got a dollop of grease. It's disgusting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe this kind of on the back of the rail, on the actual rail in the cabinet. I will show you what I've done, but this is a two-handed job. Just a little bit of grease will make this a, a pleasure to open and service. And you won't have to listen to Kyle complain about it not being right. What I've done here, I need a, all right, we're going to have to start bringing lights into the set. All right, there's a bunch of light. That's what we need. So what I've done here is plopped a, well, I just ruined the shot. I plopped a little grease down there. It's uh, just a little bit, just a fingerful. And now what we can do <laughs> is not drop the play field while I'm doing this one-handed. You'll see this very elegant maneuver. Do we have the game in view? You grab the play field. And you roll it over that grease, and you can hear it make a lot less noise. It's getting less crunchy. And now it is a joy to move forwards and backwards, and so much easier to service. Yeah, um, thanks, MGM Studios. I knew the first four was 4,005, but I couldn't remember the rest. So thanks for that. Hey, you want to switch over to this camera now? This blue guy? Blue guy? Yeah. Let's show this, too. Let's take off the apron and inspect under here. One thing I do like doing um, on these games, too, again, a, a lot of the service I do is from my old work, which would involve a warranty, and if you don't do something right, you have to go and uh, service it, and I like to eliminate a lot of those small, annoying things that do happen when you uh, get these old games going again. Cool. Okay. I'm trying to do is keep this apron in shot. Data East games, the uh, screws that hold the apron or bottom arch onto the game are under the scorecards. You get a flathead screwdriver, and we can remove this guy here. A nice long 
screw. I don't know what it is, but with Data East games, a lot of times they, they are missing parts a lot, especially the games that have been, you know, on location forever. This is not factory. <laughs> a sheetrock screw <laughs> going through the apron. So let's remove that and maybe we can eliminate that because it's awful. Oh, God. Well, I'd imagine it's there because something else is missing or why, maybe. Why would, why would you do that? Because you have no class. <laughs> oh, man. That is <laughs> yeah. awful. There you go. Okay. Well, let's get this out of the way. And we've got some. It looks like there might have been like a longer post that was screwed into the playfield at some point, or someone missed. A little lower on the can. Sorry. You're fine. Someone missed. Someone did something bad there, but that's that's pretty awful. Um, and then now we've got a much better shot of this damage at the shooter here. See how this isn't sitting flush or parallel with the um, the uh, ball shooter area? That's not good. So when this thing goes to try and strike the ball, it's not going to get a good uh, grab on it to be able to push it forward. It's going to kind of just strike it to one side, and it's not going to uh, it's not going to want to roll straight. It's not going to it's not going to work. <laughs> I guarantee you, this is going to be awful. So it's dirty. That's disgusting. Um, while I'm under here on these things, it's just worth it to clean everything. Clean as you go. Leave it nicer than when you jumped in here before. Good advice for almost every aspect of life. It really is. A lot of things <laughs> about being a good person, being a good partner, roommate, person, <laughs> is just keeping clean. Make things better when you leave. It's awful. Uh, one thing you do find with these ball trough or out hole serving coils is this pivot right here. Can you see this on camera, Steve? Oh, yeah, pretty well. This gets gummed up and nasty. It is really easy to ensure that this will have a long service life. Um, and I like to do that with a little grease. This is how I do it. I know not everyone is going to agree with using grease. Um, a, a good CV grease like I am using will not gum up. Um, I don't know if this was supposed... A lot of the Williams games I do find had dried up grease in them. I believe that this was a greased component. Um, less is always more. Again, never forget that. I removed the coil stop screws and we will remove the coil stop. I cannot just remove the coil stop because of the P-strap. That's what this is called. Uh, that holds and dresses the harness is in the way. I'm going to get a quarter inch nut driver to remove that. We got that out. This can come out of the way. This helps dress things nicely. You want your harnesses to be dressed well. You know, try to put this stuff back together the way you took it apart. We can remove that, get it out of the way. And now we're left with uh, this assembly. When the coil energizes, it pulls this pawl and kicks the ball up and over into um, the ball and waiting area. It's not a trough, but it's almost a trough. This assembly here has a spring that is uh, laced over this uh, post. I just pulled it up and off. Yeah. Thanks, Xenon. Now we can remove the link comes out this way. Now we have an E-clip, which is holding the pawl to the post. Um, I think I left a screwdriver in the game, but I've got extras. I'm going to bust out my favorite screwdriver. And I will grab one of these open sides of the E-clip. I will put my finger on the other side so it doesn't go flying across the room. And you will gently pry this out of position. You can pull this post off, and there's definitely grease on there. It is very dry. Um, it still worked. It was not binding at all, but yeah, just the camera a little lower. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks, Chad. Thank you. It's so much easier when I have the uh, video camera with the Maybe a little view higher. screen. A little higher. A little lower. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> so this post definitely has grease. You can see it here. Let me bring this light in a little closer. Is that visible? Can anyone see this? 
We've got dried up grease here. It's nasty. Um, what we can do is if I had some lacquer thinner, but unfortunately I do not, we will just add a little bit of clean grease. Um, take off as much as you can with a paper towel. I'll use lacquer thinner in this instance to break this grease. <laughs> Independence wants to know if you bought the screwdriver like that or did you get mad at it one time? <laughs> no, I custom bent it. I heat it with a torch and then stuck it in an, uh, a, a bench vise and bent it a little bit. No anger involved. No, well, a little anger involved. <laughs> we can clean that off. Having a, customizing tools is really fun. You will find times when having something like this is invaluable. Um, something I do with um, uh, flush cutters is, you know, I'll show off some custom tools at some point. If anyone wants to see my toolbox, uh, let us know. <laughs> like Stan Makita's hockey stick. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get the teeniest, teeniest bit of grease. If this is disgusting, which it kind of is, I will apply it to a screwdriver. Just a teeny bit. Apply it to the post. Just a teeny bit. You really don't need a lot. Can't emphasize that enough. You can reinstall this guy on the post. Work that grease in. Sometimes you could bring it up, bring it around, take it off, rotate it in an unnatural direction, spread it around, and that's all you need. And that will ensure another 31 years of clean operation on this device. This ball serve mechanism is very similar to what Williams used forever. Um, it was very similar to what they used on the System 11 era games. Um, I mean, all the way up to Adam's family, Twilight Zone. I don't remember the first game that used a ball trough. They used that. Indie? Trough, yeah. Maybe? Star Trek? Did that come before Star Indie? Star Trek used the, the larger trough, yeah. Yeah. Anywho, take this sucker back in here. Put the spring. This, uh, we talked about it here. Visuals, again. I'm a visual learner, so I like to show examples of things that helps me remember. Compression spring. When this compresses, it rebounds. An expansion spring. When this expands, it rebounds. That's the difference between two Some types people of call them extension springs, too. Sure. Extension, expansion. <laughs> TJ says your flipper rubbers on uneven or both flippers. Yep. And it's bothering his OCD. Well, don't worry, because... Kyle has a photographic memory, so he doesn't he doesn't need to take pictures. What? <laughs> Independence is reminding you that you didn't take pictures again this time. No need for pictures all the time, but <laughs> if it's the first time you've taken something apart, you absolutely should. I mean, everyone's got a camera in their pocket. It's wonderful. Get that back on there. We're going to reinstall the coil stop. Uh, coil sleeves. You don't need to replace every coil sleeve you remove. It, it, is, it is worth it. If you feel like you know, going through and replacing every coil sleeve, that can feels nice sometimes. In this case, this device really doesn't need it. We're going to put that back in place. Coil sleeves, I like to replace on like, uh, I mean, always on flippers. That's just, if you take it apart, you might as well put a new one in there. Tighten this guy back down. Don't tighten them all the way. And also don't cross thread things. On these things I like to turn it the incorrect way until you hear it clink and then start screwing it down. Get both screws in and then torque them evenly. Do not torque one all the way down. It's always good to compress the coil stop towards the coil as you tighten them. That's a good point, Emoto. He is taking pictures with three different cameras at 30 frames per second. Yeah. But uh, Mitchell also says that uh, sometimes he's found on machines that people have installed the expansion, extension springs incorrectly by putting the connection point deeper into the spring instead of at the end of the loop. Yeah. He, said it, he thinks it's to make it stronger. Well, what are your thoughts about that? So what that is most of the time, in, in my experience, is people are compensating for poor performance of the mechanism. If this thing was dried up with grease, um, th it wouldn't want to return back to its normal home. So a lazy person or someone who might not understand or just wants to get it working will stretch this spring out 
and it will impair more force to bring it back home. I see that a lot with drop targets. You see that a lot on flippers that are binding or have bad coil uh, sleeves or something like that. Uh, again, you shouldn't need to do that. The original factory design did not require you to use, you know, <laughs> three quarters of a spring instead of the whole thing. So um, I found, in my experience, the way I was taught, you make it as factory as possible, and then you can address problems. Net Reamer says, should there be uh, a rubber or something on the metal slap the crank rests on? He doesn't know Data East. It just seems like it should be there. I know that, I mean, Williams did. Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't know if yeah. Data East did. So another powerful thing with uh, doing pinball work, I'm going to find another clean towel, sorry everybody, is looking for um, evidence. Sometimes when you're working on a pinball machine, especially something that has been just, you know, torn up we'll by... some pinball archaeology. Pardon, pinball archaeology, but you have to be a detective. Um, I'm looking at this bracket right now, and I can... It almost looks like it is cleaner, and there was something slipped around here. Um, I don't know the Data East stuff as well as a lot of other people. Um, maybe TJ. TJ. <laughs> TJ, let us know. <laughs> let us know, man. You actually need to be here, TJ. You're the expert. <laughs> um, to make TJ less angry, let's remove these flipper rubbers. Actually, no. We're going to play the game. Let's just fix it. Okay, here. This is actually a good angle. When you are installing flipper rubbers, I mean, this is bad. You don't do that. It, seat these things all the way down along that groove. That will help make sure the ball does not get forced up or down with an uneven rubber. Seat them all the way down. And the pro tip, both of these were installed correctly. <laughs> I hate it when you see the sizing information on the top of the rubber. I always try to put all that stuff down because it takes away from... So would that, would that spot on that uh, kicker mechanism, would that be a good place for some heat shrink tubing? Mitchell Leader, so you could just put some heat shrink tubing on it. Maybe. I don't know how well heat shrink tubing would hold up to repeated banging. Right. banging. Williams used a very hard plastic, right. almost kind of like the same materials like a 3D printer would mm -hmm. put out. Um, I don't know. It doesn't, I mean, this is original. It's 30-something years old. It doesn't look like it's done too much damage. A Yep. It doesn't look like it's really, it, it's hardened steel, so I don't know though. Um, if someone knows if that's what they did, I don't think it shows that part on the assembly drawing, so who knows? Gary Stern might. Let's call Gary. <laughs> Gary, do you remember the ball serve mechanism? <laughs> Get this uh, screw back in here. This screw not only holds the P-strap, but it also mounts this plate to the bottom of the play field. If we were being extraordinarily thorough and we were trying to make this game as clean as possible, we could get some Novus and clean this up. Since this is probably not coming off again, I'm going to go grab my Novus rag and let's try to do it now. As well. I like this format of Pintech. It's a little like I'm kind of moving all over the place. I'm having to walk around to get stuff. I don't know, I don't know what the chat thinks, but I don't know chat. But the, you know, again, I made this post on Reddit asking what people would like to see from this show, and a lot of them said make a game work. And uh, this is as close as I can get to it now. But you know, you can't prepare for what you're going to find a lot of the times, and a lot of pinballs back and forth. Ah, see, now that's satisfying. My my favorite part of pinball, you know, getting these things working again is cutting that. 30 years worth of dirt and just seeing how clean and nice these Pretty things look. Get a little bit of dirt off. And this is, uh, again, this goes back to what we were saying. Make things nicer than the way you found it. Yeah, how are thanks. we doing for time? Um, you know, all the time in the world. It is, uh, we've been streaming now for about an hour and five minutes. Ah, let's go so, for a little longer. We haven't even good. turned the game sounds on. Sounds good. Let's see what we can find. Sometimes I will run Novus up over the, uh, the and thank rails. Thank you so much, chat, for helping each other out there with those questions. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I like the chat. I wish that I could like see the chat, um, but I guess I wouldn't get a ton of work done. <laughs> We've been doing some late just nights. Get you some Google glasses or something, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's uh, do that. See it on the side there. I'll be a techie. Okay. An important thing. Um, sometimes games are missing these. Oh, MGM Studio says yes, it is missing the striker ring, and Marco Specialties has them. Nice. Part number 0371 one 
that's the William. That is a Williams part number, but I'm pretty sure that this is a. There may there may not be a Data East part number for it, but there's definitely a spot for it on that game. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> this how's, uh, the, how's the roller games ramp coming along there? So Daryl Decker wants to know. Hey Daryl. Hey Daryl. Um, it we're waiting on parts. I sent the diverter uh, link and the diverter. Um, coil stop off for reproduction. We should have the link in like next week and the coil stop should be here soon. So I'll be able to put it all together and see if I can create that update kit. Um, really looking forward to getting that game back together. Is this visible, this wire form? You can see it. Okay. This wire form here inside the apron is to keep a ball from rolling back into the out hole if the uh, shooter can't get it up the, uh, the out hole kicker can't get it up this ramp. If you have a game that is constantly, uh, you know, thunk and then back into the out hole, thunk, thunk, it takes three or four times, take your apron off and see if you're missing this. This is not just Data East specific. Williams games use this too. Um, a lot of System 11 games, for whatever reason, these things are broken. Hmm. Um, maybe it's just a, an age thing, but this is a very important little wire form. And we sell those. So we will get this guy back on. Get a wider shot. Ah, does that look okay? For some re screwing? <laughs> a little crooked. A little crooked? <laughs> you don't say. All right. Let's get some slack here. All right. We're going to get our long screws that hold the apron back on. Feels like it's in place. This game didn't have any scorecards or anything like that, so maybe once we're all done and we're happy with the way it works, we can, uh, we can niceify it and bring it to the office and put it next to our new turtles while yeah. it's there for a little while. Cool. Okay. Got that done. I think it's safe to turn the game on and we could watch some things work. Oh, it's so much smoother now that you oiled it. I love it. Um, Okay, here's another pro tip. I've done this before. And I'm not Emoto proud to admit it. The lighting is beautiful. Who does? Emoto. Wow. That's Thanks, some Emoto. Beautiful lighting. She trusted us to do this, and I guess we're not disappointing her 100%. <laughs> not 100%. Just 90%. Okay. <laughs> so I've done this before. It's embarrassing. It's annoying. Oh, that's embarrassing and annoying. We'll fix it. Camera down a little on the play field. Sure. When you lift your play field up, be cognizant that these rails are only so long. Do not yank this thing out with He-Man strength. Um, that is why I like to oil them a little bit. If you grease them, you don't need to rip and make these things come and slam in the bottom of the cabinet. It's not fun. When you're bringing a play field forward, you can feel it stop. And that's where you want to stop, or else your game will be, your play field will be in the bottom of the cabinet. All right, uh, let us screw this guy back in, even though I hate it. Um, we will address this at another time. How, how would you go about fixing that? Do you have to add more to that wood rail? Or? Honestly, I don't know why it's there. So you know what? We're going to take it off for now. And if it <laughs> no, performs... No, no, Emoto. We need you back. He says he's never coming back now. Why? No. Don't. We miss you. All right. Let's see what we can do. Fire the game up. Now, I removed the batteries, so we are going to need to get the game ready to play. In this case, we'll add some credits. Um, before we play, let's go through some things with the Data East uh, test system. Um, it's probably best, I can show you what it looks like, and then I'll focus it on the DMD. You've got two buttons here. It's really awkward. Um, there is one button and can't see the two buttons. It's too dark. Uh, let's make more light happen. Wait. Yeah. Maybe. We do need like a really powerful thrower light in here, Emoto. It's visible at all? Mm. That's, that's where the service switch would be if we could see it. Okay, well, there's service switches here. You've got two of them. There's one in the center that has an up and a down position. 
and then you've got another button that will, it's like the gas pedal. So the way I was taught this, and I can't ever forget it, uh, can we see the DMD now? Yep. There's two ways to go in these test menus. You've got your audits and adjustments, and then you've got the service menu. If we have the green button, the center button, that is two positions, if we have it up instead of pushed in, and we push forward, we will go into the audits and adjustments. We'll move forward, right? Um, if we wanted to get into the service adjustments, oh, let me get it back into attract mode here. Come on. Do you need a new service switch? It's just, it probably hasn't been pushed in a long time. Um, the way this was taught to me is like, it's just like getting out of your driveway, right? If you pull in forward into the driveway, you got to put it in reverse before you can go forward. So we're going to push the green button backwards, put it in reverse. We're going to hit the go button, and now we're in diagnostics. Now we will take the green button and put it back in forward. We're going to put it in drive, and then hit the other button, and that'll help us move through the test menu. Uh, I was very proud of learning that, and I've never forgotten. Well, Rolling Wonder brought up a really interesting point. You know, the EM three hundred for the bowling Scott game, Lee. right? Yeah, uh -huh. and it has the <clears throat> it uses a wire like the one on the T in the TMNT apron, where the balls are used like bowling balls coming through a ball return. Without it, the end of ball bonus wouldn't always be counted correctly. I guess that is that in the back glass there. Does three hundred have the? I think I think three hundred. I think it's three hundred and top score that are the same game, and I think it is one of the ones that kicks them up, and that is your bonus, right? Right. Like yep. soccer, yep. got leave soccer. Yep. Um, yeah. No, I mean that's. I guess you'd call it a wire form, and wire forms can be hooked up to all sorts of switches, either under the play field or above the play field. It's common to see those wire forms, um, you know, on ramp entrances and ramp exits and stuff like that. But yeah. 300 is an incredible it? game. Yeah, it's such a good game. But and now TJ, that we're in here. TJ also brings up that this menu system is the same as Williams System 11 and some older systems as well. Yep. So Yeah, the two-button system. And then Williams moved to a three-button system with one button being a dedicated service credit button, I think. So like a game like Roller Games or Taxi, maybe that late System 11 era. And then you've got the wonderful four-button system that everyone loves. <laughs> Anyways. Um, we can go through here, and um, I always like to do this. We can move through and find uh, the lamp test. We can at least get like a baseline before we go in and play. I can see some problems already. The 100K light awesome score. <laughs> Those are both out. What other lights are out? This will just force the game to put on all switched lamps or feature lamps um, and run with it, right? So we can get, do we have a good view of the play field? Kind of? Sort of? The upper play field? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We can see, it looks like we've got a 50K in the um, captive ball areas out. All of these lights here are out, but we need to remember that some of these lights, you know, we can see some inserts that aren't lit. Those are flashers. Flashers are not considered a lamp. Flashers are considered a solenoid in game test, so you can test those separately, but you have to do it in solenoid test. Um, for now, we can see that all, most of the feature lights work, so let's just play the game. Uh, what, something else I wanted to address. I did see these. Let's, um, can we switch to the, uh, the Sony cam? Of course. Let's get up and close with our high quality camera. We good? Mm -hmm. Cool. Check out these ramp flaps. Someone has put some massive, most likely sheetrock screws in where these ramp flaps go. And you see how they're kinked super bad? That transition right there is like way, 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 way too intense. I don't know if there was a shim under these ramps to kind of bring them up a little bit, or if someone used these much too large screws. They look like they're probably a number six um, like sheetrock screw or some sort of screw. And they've just tightened these things down too hard. Um, you'll find in this sort of a situation that the ball might jump. Um, and if someone has used the incorrect screw, you will need to go in and fill with a toothpick and some wood glue or something like that so you can use the correct screw. I believe the correct screw in this application would be a number four by one half inch. Uh, what is the kind of head that has the, the two angles that come down like that? Which one is that? Oh, 
MGM Studios I probably bet he knows. Does. I bet he does. Anyways, <laughs> um, we've got lights. That works. I can't remember right now. We can keep going through the test menu. Um, we can test things by rows and columns. Um, I can test single lamps. Um, oh, yeah, Data East has a cycling flasher test. That's really cool. So oh, you don't cool. have to go through and step them as uh, solenoids. And it looks like most of them work. I can see a couple that might not be working. Uh, these are things that I'll generally go and address uh, when all the mechanics are done. Once the game is torn apart, put back together, and shoots well, um, I'm going to address some of those things. What else do we have? Oh, I don't get a nice chance to work on old Data East games like this often. You can see it. Some of those uh, coils, or what is considered a coil, are flashers. And why is that? Uh, I'm not going to say anything wrong, so I don't want to try to explain it. <laughs> but there's a way that the game can use like, a relay to change if it's a coil yeah. or a flasher, because not, there's no instance where both of them will be driven at the same time. So the game will make a relay go to one side and be like, okay, this is a coil. But if the relay's in the other position, that's a flasher or something else. Um, since I don't want to try to get it out of here, we can... Oh, there we go. We finished. If you do notice, too, to people that are really uh, have seen a lot of these games or are paying attention with roller games and stuff, you notice that this computer looks kind of similar to something you may have seen before. Data East used um, basically the System 11 computer. And it's incredible that they, I mean, they used this uh, computer with, with changes from like their first game even into Sega era. Baywatch uses this same computer. <laughs> um, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, some other boards, like let's go over this before we power the game on. You've got your sound board here. Uh, your PPV board, which is like an interface board. Um, your power supply. And then you've got your, um, your dot matrix display, which is also a computer. Um, it does have software on it to run the video information. So, anywho. Let's switch back to that blue camera and uh, let's power this game up. Well, we'll see where we're at. That side art still looks really good. I know, this the game's in really good shape. A lot of times you see with these old Data East games that the, um, they start to plank and you get um, really torn up cabinets. This thing's in good shape. See what we can get. We need pinballs, so I need to figure out where I left those. I'm pretty sure I just threw them right in where the cash box goes. Do we have any questions before we move on and like power the game up? Any questions, Jeff? Next week we will not be working on the game. We will be unboxing a brand new game. Uh, but if we wanted to, we could continue with this. Um, there's not too much work to be done on this game. A lot of it's busy work, like. Uh, Figuring out why this lamp doesn't work, or you know, let's fill in a wood or a screw hole or something like that. Um, but those are valuable things to be taught. So, oh, got to add some credits because it is not on free play anymore since I ripped the batteries out. No questions. <laughs> All right, we don't need no questions. We're just gonna keep moving. Uh, CNK says unboxing is boring. It is really boring. Uh, but we're going to try something new. We're going to quickly unbox the game. Um, you know, a lot of people that do watch our show either are going to buy a new game, they might not be repairing their old games, and you know. Mitchell we're gonna Reader would like you to see you would like to see you continue with this machine. He wants you to diagnose the GI issues. Yeah, absolutely. Well, now the funny thing is, is they're working now. So that is where we're going to run into some fun figuring out why it doesn't and, work. And he wants to see you install the uh, NVRAM. Because I don't think he'll install a new battery pack. I think you'll go with the NVRAM. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. If this game was going to stay with me forever, it would be NVRAM. We can totally do that. Back to the unboxing. After we unbox the turtles, we're going to try to do a new little spin on something and try to show off what's inside the game. Uh, show the new mechanisms and how these things work on the play field. Um, we'll have some guests from Stern that might help us explain some of that stuff. So we'll get rid of the unboxing stuff real quick.
I've timed myself. I could, if I had all the right equipment, I could do it how I wanted. I could get a box out of a game out of a box in like 18 minutes, maybe 19 minutes. And up on legs and ready to go, 18 minutes. Basically, yeah, ready to power off. So, um, the game works. We've got flippers that activate. What's the frame like? Are you looking at the probably top half of the playfield right now? Yeah, let's do this. You can kind of see. Let's go in and we'll poke things. Uh, that's always a fun way to see if things are going. There we go. Check that out. I was right. <laughs> and that is dangerous because it's going to sit there and try to keep kicking it out. And since it'll never sit flush, and it's bouncing a bit, it'll never be able to kick it out. Well, I'm wrong. It kicks it out. <laughs> but that's bad. Never that will say heat. never, yeah, but you, you that needs to be fixed. That coil will heat up real fast and it will lose. Um, and that, that does sound like, like a good topic for a couple weeks from now, explaining the difference between NVRAM and battery pack and why you'd go with both. Or either, or neither. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we can get into that. I'll try to research and a little bit. has the question that everyone is asking. What? What finger do you use for the flippers? I use my middle fingers, I notice. Is that weird? That's, that's a little strange. Really? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> wow, I'm going to have to start asking. <laughs> um, looks like we let the game do a ball search. Everything is working. It kicked the new ball out for me. Let's see if the up kicker works. We can shoot it into the sewer shot. Oh, we confused the game. We put a ball in the sewer when we put another ball in the out hole. Um, nice, oh, we really screwed it up. Let's see what happens if we kick it in there again. <laughs> wow, hey, look at, there we go, we got a problem. Um, old games aren't smart enough, or this one's just smart enough to compensate to give you a free ball. That was a ball search. I don't know if that switch is working. Let's get the game back into a normal state. I'm going to slam tilt the game to bring it back to the um, game over screen. So we know the solenoid works, but does the switch work? If the, switch, if the game can't see the ball sitting on top of the solenoid, it doesn't know to kick it out. It knows to do a ball search because that's written in software. Hey, if a switch doesn't close in 20 seconds, Fire all the solenoids. Let's kick them out. Let's see what happens. Can I hit the ramp? No. So everybody has different fingers, man. That Reamer uses his middle and index finger. Huh. Double tap. Man, I've never really paid attention. I had to think about it for and, a uh, second. You know, there are some games that have two flipper buttons where you'd have to use both. Yeah. Huh. Oh, Emoto reminds us that Elliot Eisman and Mike Vinicor and Zombie Yeti. I wasn't sure if we were supposed to say who was coming. Sorry, I'm keeping secrets. And Emoto uses her middle fingers too. I guess it's not weird. I yeah. guess I'm the weirdo. Yeah, you're the weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Elliot Eisman is the, uh, was the mechanical engineer on the game. Uh, Mike Vinicor is an all-around awesome dude and does everything. I think he wears every hat at Stern. And um, I guess Zombie Yeti's showing up for after hours that night. Yep, yeah, so Jeremy will be here after hours, which is going to be maybe like 7 or 8 p.m., I believe, on that day, and we're going to set the game up and play. Um, some of us will be here uh, enjoying the new game. But it looks like it's working. I think I confused the game when I threw it into the... Yeah, that's fine. So now it's going to try to do multi-ball, and this is where it becomes a problem. With that kicker. Uh, yeah. So we'll see. I've um Man, that pizza's going nuts. <laughs> pizza sounds good. I have modified these older Data East games to use the modern Stern um uh auto Can we serve. Get close up on the baby turtles as long as we're here. Oh yeah, everyone needs to see the baby turtles. They're cute. Can we see? Is that visible? Yeah, yeah, they're coming in. There you go. They want pizza. They want some pizza. <laughs> Kevin O'Connor did a really good job with the artwork on the playfield. Kevin O'Connor uh, did the artwork on the playfield, and Paul Ferris did the artwork on the back glass. Um, yeah, it's overall, it's a fun game. Uh, I really like these basic pinball games where shoot the ball around, get the multi-ball, get your jackpots. They're really fun. Uh, to just step up to and not need to read a book to know how to effectively score. Cool, so next week will be the unboxing. Yep. And then the following week, you want to return to Turtles? You want to come back and, and show some of that maybe installing the NVRAM? 
yeah, we can do some basic stuff like that. My goal was like, I was gonna do like rebuild the flippers, but I didn't wanna do like rebuilding flippers for four weeks in a row because it's pin tech, not pin flipper rebuild. Um, but yeah, it would be fun. I could show some of that stuff. It I'd depends, there's a, there's a couple ways to find out who did the art on games. Um, one is to ask Kyle, because he knows every artist for every <laughs> game. And no. the other is to check out, you know, like internet pinball database. Yeah. and look at the game, and they usually have everyone associated with the game listed in the content of that particular game. Absolutely. If you're not familiar with IPDB, uh, go waste a bunch of time uh, learning about pinball because it's a wealth of topics. There's a lot to learn. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's do some of that. I know that people were asking last week to learn how to do Molex crimping. Um, we could recrimp a new... Or you could change those IDCs out to Molex. Yep. Yeah, we'll change out that GI we got connector. It, <laughs> we got this. We got this. So yeah, that sounds fun. Cool, um, cool. Hey, look, I found a screw that's not screwed into anything. That's probably a bad <laughs> T nut. There's all sorts of stuff to do on all of these games. Um, every pinball machine's broken, whether you know it or not. So <laughs> thanks so much for hanging out with us, guys. That was fantastic. And removing that dang hum from Data East machines would be awesome. Yeah, like that's, I, that's black magic, man. Someone <laughs> mentioned to me that to me on Reddit, and that's been something I've wanted to do. I've never owned a Data East game for long enough to care to do that, but I'd like to learn. I'm afraid though that it's like it's it's kind of a it is it's a black hole. You're just gonna be changing capacitors forever, and ugh. <laughs> let's well, cool. think about maybe, it. Maybe maybe in a few episodes. Maybe in a few episodes. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll be able to ramp this up to some more advanced topics later. I'd really like to do some basic soldering on boards. Um, oh dang! Matt Reamer got the Data East part for that striker ring. Oh, it it, it it's on the Marco site. All right. Hey, so. let's hire that guy. Come on out to <laughs> South on. Carolina. Come we, on, we, Matt we would like to have you out here. <laughs> but don't forget. Uh, Free shipping on all orders over $99 this weekend. And go ahead and buy more than $99 worth of stuff, and we'll send you your stuff. For free! For free. Yeah, buy no hardware. Everyone needs hardware. Buy, buy yourself the hardware kit. Get yourself that striker ring. You know, buy it even if you don't have a Data East machine. You might get one in the future, and it might be like this one. Miss it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And then you'd have taken advantage of the free shipping. Good oh, cool, Matt Reamer. We will fix that. He said it's not associated to, okay. the, to the turtles, but we'll, we'll get that taken care of. Add Thanks that to our tip. association tasks. Yep. We've got a lot of associating to do. I guess that means we better go back to work now, huh? Yeah, we better get back to work. <sighs> okay. Thanks so much, guys. Really appreciate it. And uh, see you next week for the uh, unboxing of the new Stern TMNT pinball machine. But stick around for playing the new TMNT machine. That's important. Next week. Next week. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye.